Yes, I'm the, I'm the console SME based in um, Sydney, Australia, uh, covering the Asia Pacific region. Um, so today I'm going to present on chaos engineering uh, with console. But first, let's let's dive in and understand what chaos engineering is about. You know, chaos engineering is a discipline of experimenting on a system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. Now, essentially, it's a disciplined approach to identifying failures before they become outages. Um, we, we do this by proactively testing how a system responds under stress. Uh, you can then identify and fix failures before they end up in the news, which is always good. It's uh, chaos engineering lets you compare what you think will happen to what actually happens in your system. You literally break things on purpose um, to learn on you know, how to build more resilient systems. Uh, it's, that's always fun, right? Breaking things on purpose. Chaos engineering is, is you know, it's, it's, it's popular with distributed systems. You've probably heard of Netflix and Chaos Monkey. You know, it's, it's responsible for randomly terminating instances in production, you know, to ensure engineers implement and build their services to be more resilient to instance failures. Now, to specifically address some of the uncertainty of, you know, distributed systems at scale, some of the principles or the principles of chaos engineering are similar to those of, you know, the scientific method. Uh, this can be thought as, you know, facilitation of experiments to uncover systematic weaknesses. You know, though, unlike the scientific method, the assumption is that the system is stable and then we look for variance. So just breaking it down a little bit, um, these experiments is, is what I'm going to refer to them, generally consist of four key practices or areas. We first start by defining the steady state, you know, baseline, as some measurable output of a system that indicates normal behavior. And it's good to know what, what normal and steady is in a critical system so that we can detect, you know, deviation and regression. You know, we then hypothesize that this steady state will continue, um, you know, in, in our control group and our experimental group. Um, just for reference, the steady state is, you know, a control group, right? usually your production system. We introduce variables that kind of reflect real world events like server crashes, container crashes, hard drives that malfunction, uh, network connections that are the servered or, or lost. Then we, we try to disprove the hypothesis by looking for a difference you know, in the steady state between the two groups. So the, we do this to truly identify uh, weaknesses in the system and application architecture. You know, we, we expose the application to these experiments in the environment uh, so that we learn more about them. Um, the harder it is to disrupt the steady state, you know, the more confidence we have in our behavior of the system. You know, if we uncover a weakness, uh, we can now target it for improvements um, before it, you know, manifests into something large. So, I mean, chaos engineering is, is, is a broader topic at large, right? And we really don't have a lot of room to discuss it here. Um, but what, would, what I'll do at the end of this um, uh, webinar is put a few links um, if you wanted to learn more about it. So now, now that we kind of have some simple background on um, chaos engineering, we're going to start experimenting with an example application. And the example application that I'm going to use is, is HashiCups. Um, this is going to be our baseline, our steady state and normal behavior. You can see HashiCups is built um, with a number of uh, components. We have the front end that interacts with the public API, which then interacts with the product API and then the product database and, and the payment system and so forth. We're going to use this application to conduct uh, some chaos experiments. You know, we're going to hypothesize when we run this experiment on HashiCups that it's going to tolerate some failures. You know, specifically, we're going to target um, some of the product API stuff. You know, the, the essentially the, the team who developed this application, let's say, for example, told us it's fine. It, it, you know, it's going to be resilient to some failures. And we're going to test this. So let me, um, let me, quickly switch over and just give you a demonstration of uh, the steady state in the baseline. And then we'll, we'll try to simulate some tests. So just flicking over quickly to um, 
my screen over here and hopefully you can see that now. I have my services registered into console. Um, and we can see they're healthy because they're all green. We can see my application is up. I can refresh that quickly and I can see that I can purchase some coffee and so forth if I wanted to. What I'm going to do is simply run a script. Um, and this script is just going to uh, concurrently run some transactions and purchase coffee. And we can see that happening now. So we can see some payments being processed successfully, which is um, a good indication of how I expect the application to run. Um, this is my steady state and this is my baseline. I'm going to intentionally break or crash uh, one of the services now. And when I do that, let's see what happens. So just on my screen over here, I've just crashed it. And we can see that immediately that the application has stopped functioning. I can no longer process a payment or purchase any coffee. If I go to my services UI um, or my console UI, I can see that I have a failure here, which is picked up straight away. So immediately I have found something with my experiment where you know when the backend or the, the team told us the, the container was able to tolerate some failures, clearly it can't. Um, I have the ability now to, to fix it. Unfortunately, this scenario is fairly common, right? And then there's many ways to mitigate this, this error through load balances, you know, creating DNS rules, other health checks, and so forth. However, this introduces additional complexity uh, to the application architecture. You know, we could immediately address this problem by adding more you know, service instances in the data center, and then the service mesh that I'm using would simply route the request to a local health instance. You know, adding more instances helps, but what happens if something more severe happens, you know, especially to that local data center? So we have an area to focus on, fix, make changes, to make a more robust and stable application. So the ideal solution, you know, should be simple to implement, you know, contain minimal application changes and be flexible enough to adapt to changing environments. And this is where console can help create the ideal solution. So let me bring that service back up because uh, I want to bring it back up to, you know, the baseline or the steady state, and then I'll conduct a new experiment uh, once I've made my changes. So I'm just bringing back that container now, and we can see now that transactions are happening. And immediately you could see the service um, uh, coming back online and being fairly happy. So going back to uh, the presentation for a moment here, just to summarize, we've, we've kind of crushed that container intentionally. Uh, we've proved uh, the, the application HashiCups can't tolerate a failure. We're about to implement some fixes with console. So with console, uh, to make HashiCups more robust and stable, we're going to use it to improve the application's resilience through the service mesh and automatically fail over traffic to healthy instances. So what we've done is deployed HashiCups redundantly into two different data centers. And let's, let's assume for a moment each data center is located potentially in a different region as well. Uh, this could be a different cloud. Um, you know, it really doesn't matter when it comes to console. The desired behavior is that if any service were to go down, it should automatically fail over to a healthy service in another data center. You know, a key service mesh benefit is the ability to dynamically change the application traffic, which enables you to route traffic to a healthy instance or backup service. So let me show you what this looks like in the UI, but <clears throat> again, essentially we, we're gonna run a little bit more of chaos than me intentionally disabling um, or crashing the container. What I'm gonna do is I have Pumba, which is an open source uh, chaos tool that intentionally creates disruptions on containers and, and introduces network issues and so forth. Um, but we're gonna do that across all the services and we're gonna see how that behaves. So let me show you the, the, the UI with both data centers, both services, um, and I'll show you the config that I'm about to put in. Um, we're gonna use uh, service resolving console to essentially enable the failover mechanism. And then we'll run, rerun the experiment again. So going back to my demo screen, um, we'll leave uh, the continuous processing or payments continually there. So we can see I have all my instances uh, in data center one, just like before in DC two, 
again, very similarly, I have uh, all my instances there. Quickly, let's pay attention to the product API. If I go in there, I can see by routing, um, pay attention here, because when we make a change, we'll see um, a failover data center being presented here. So what I'm gonna do is actually apply the service resolver config uh, to the public API. Um, and this is the config right here. It has a timeout of zero seconds because we want this to take effect immediately. Again, this is configurable. You can put tens, whatever timing you wanna put here. Right? And then we're gonna put in the failover uh, configuration, obviously data center two, and then data center one as well. Um, so let me apply this now. And then we should see that uh, immediately change over there. Okay. So I've made that and I've applied that service resolver config. And you can see here now, if we look at the public API service, I can see a failover mechanism um, or failover data center for this particular service. The same applies if I go to data center two, I can see that it is the reverse. All right. So now let's run uh, this script and let's start failing over uh, or causing some chaos in the environment. Uh, so this is going to intentionally start disrupting a whole bunch of containers or all the services that we see. If I go back to my UI here, we'll start seeing some failures and so forth. First, it's going to crash the product and it'll keep randomly uh, crashing these containers intentionally. What is important to know is I've already applied the service resolver on uh, all the other services. So again, based on failures, we can see the application tolerating um, uh, the chaos at the moment. And services are being redirected across to Data Center 2 as required. All right, there we go. So let's letting this run for a little bit more. And great. So, I mean, this, this is a, a simple experiment to, you know, demonstrate containers crashing um, in my environment here and, and using console to redirect the traffic to services sitting in another data center. Uh, we can apply all sorts of experiments um, and leverage console to provide, you know, a lot more application resilience and, and failover capabilities. You know, if you, if you there's, there's a particular topic when you, you know, read into chaos engineering so forth, you know, according to the latest report, there's, there's a report around last year, 2021, around the state of chaos engineering. And the most common outages of chaos engineering are to increase availability, you know, things like lower, you know, mean time to resolution, you know, lower mean time to, you know, deduction, but all these things really relate. And, and the outcome we want is, you know, fewer outages. Uh, and there's, you know, there's, there's been a lot of work there. So teams who frequently run chaos engineering experiments are more likely to have better SLAs and availability. So that that's simply the, what I wanted to demonstrate today using console. Um, hopefully you've, you've, you know, learned some things around chaos engineering and, you know, how console can help provide that, that failover capability. Um, that, that's really it. Uh, 